Alright, welcome to today's video. Today I've got something really interesting to share with you. I just got a brand new macro lens and it is not just any kind of macro lens. It is a super wide angle 17mm macro lens with one X in the center of the frame. And the reason why I am so excited for this lens is that it has been a DIY project of mine that I've been working on for several weeks and even months now. And when I started this project, not really knowing the challenges that I would face, I set several criteria for myself that I wanted the lens to meet. And I said I wanted it to cover a full frame sensor with only very minor vignetting. I wanted a decent image quality in terms of sharpness and chromatic aberrations. I wanted true bond X in the center of the frame and I wanted a super wide angle of less than 20mm focal length. And it's been a hell of a journey and you can read all about it with different setups that I came up with and extensive information in my blog post that I'll be publishing along with this video. You can find it in the description below. In this video, however, I'll stick to how I made this lens, the basic formula and how you could probably put one together yourself. I'll show you some sample images and then we'll talk a bit more about handling the lens and how to use it. But for now, let's grab this lens, take it for a walk. The weather is beautiful and then I'll show you some test shots. Let's go! And we really lucked out with the conditions. Even though it's winter and the subjects are very few, the landscape is looking beautiful with a white cover of snow, the sky is blue and the sun is shining. And I already spotted my first subject, a skeleton leaf that the river washed ashore and it was caught on a little stick so I stuck it into the snow like a flag and photographed it right against the sun which brought out a lot of detail and you can just see the wide angle look looks great with smaller subjects. Next I went to the river shore to find some more interesting structures in the ice and I started photographing some of the shattered pieces of ice on the shore and I focused right on the corner of one and you can see how crisp the image quality is very well in this photo. Then I moved on to photograph some air pockets embedded in the frozen water on the beach and I really like how they reflect the sunlight and the abundance of detail they held. I found some that were rising from a dead maple leaf and I photographed them as well, really enjoying how much context this lens gives me. Last but not least I spotted a young maple tree sticking out of the snow and holding up one last leaf that was catching the sunlight and it was such a beautiful sight that I had to photograph it. And even though there's nothing really too special about this image I like the feeling it conveys and the wide angle documentary look of it. Anyway, these have been all the images that I took on our little macro walk but of course I've got plenty more sample photos from this lens and I'm going to show them all to you after this video is done. In the end there will be a little slide Show, but for now I'm going to talk about how I made this lens and the basic recipe I used. For this project I chose a 28mm wide angle prime lens produced by Albinar that I then combined with an additional wide angle front element that sits on top of the lens and multiplies its field of view. And for this reason I chose a 28mm wide angle lens because it has a wide angle field of view by itself but not wide enough to cause disturbing vignetting in combination with the new glass. Next I mounted the whole lens on a short stack of step rings that serves the same function as an extension tube would. It shifts the focusing distance close enough to the lens to keep it nice and compact and almost completely remove vignetting from the frame by expanding the image cone. It also enables the lens close focusing capabilities. Now to sum it up the basic recipe of this lens is very simple. It is a wide angle prime on a short set of either step rings or extension tubes in combination with an additional wide angle front element. My front element came out of a Canon EF 28 to 80 mm zoom lens that I modified last year for extreme macro photography I'll be on one eggs. And if you didn't know this, you can modify most standard zooms that way simply by removing the front element and they will yield great magnification ratios and most often be electronically controlled, which is a sweet bonus. But let's get back to this lens. You could also use other front elements such as wide angle macro converters, they work really well. Um, besides that, you could tear down either broken lenses, which are really cheap if you, if you keep your eyes open for all wide angle zoom lenses. Um, besides that you could also tear apart old outdated point and shoot cameras. Um, if you're a DIY head you'll find a solution, if not that's okay, it's my cup of tea, it doesn't have to be yours. But if you're still interested in the next and last part of this video, I'll show you an image and the post-processed version of it. We'll compare the raw file to the edited image and I'll talk about a couple flaws of these wide-angle macro lenses. Let's dive in.
There we go. You can probably tell that this is the undeveloped RAW file and there are a couple things in it that I wanted to point out. First of all, there is a little piece of fiber quite close to the sunburst that is showing up distinguishably in the frame. And that was a little piece of dirt located right on the front element of the lens. And because of the large field of view of wide angle photography, and because of the fact that we shifted so close to the lens, dirt on the lens is going to show up in your images, especially at narrow apertures, and haze on the lens might interfere with your image quality. Next I want to point out the sunburst in this image which looks really nice for a macro lens and whenever you have the sun in the frame you're likely to receive a nice sunburst when you stop down just a little bit from f8 or so you get really nice stars which is something I really like about the lens but let's talk about the image quality. You can notice that there is relatively strong chromatic aberration going on in the corners of the frame. These are partially due to the nature of wide angle photography and how it becomes exaggerated when we talk about macro lenses. But they're also partially due to the fact that this is not a lens that has been designed by a lens designer. It is a DIY project and so it's not going to be optically perfect. The sharpness, however, is astonishingly sharp in the image center considering that this is a DIY lens that I made from fairly cheap parts. It is tag sharp in the center and around the edges it obviously falls off even if the subject would be in focus theoretically. But overall the image quality is really good, let's have a look at the final image. And this is the final image with a corrected white balance and some slight local adjustments done in camera raw. I used the local adjustments tool to remove the fringing and I sharpened the image and you can really see it came along nicely. And overall I really like how the fisheye perspective makes macro images pop and the new perspectives it opens up. If you found this video useful, insightful or interesting, leave me a thumbs up. If it earns you a subscription, that would be awesome. As I promised, I'll finish it off with a slideshow of more sample images from this lens. And if you're interested in more details and more of the setups I came up with, check out the blog post in the description below. That's it for today. Have a good one. Cheers.